Hey, if you found this video, it's probably because you are struggling with some kind of database performance in your environment. And I have to tell you, good news, you are in the right place for database performance and tuning tips and tricks. Today's tips we're gonna give you are, are how to install, run, and point SolarWinds Database Performance Analyzer at the right databases in your environment. That way you can use this extremely intense tool to granularly diagnose the root cause problems that are affecting your data environment. Do me a favor and right now, before we get started, hit the like button, uh, that helps us a whole lot. And at the end, if you get a lot of value, make sure you share this with your colleagues. Now I'm gonna turn you over to a man who has 30 years of experience in database administration, performance and tuning, and has written 20 books on database management, Jeffrey Garbus. Welcome to Installing SolarWinds DPA. I'm your host, Jeff Garbus. Soaring Eagle Data Solutions. My email is here, but this isn't about me, so let's just get into it. Steps involved in being able to get true insight into your database servers are first, download the DPA software. Next, we'll install the monitor. The monitor is effectively a web host that allows you to Take a look at the data in the repository from any place that has access to your repository. Finally, we'll create the repository, which is the database that the monitor is going to put information into, the collected information, and finally, we'll point the DPA monitor to the target servers. So the first step is to download the software. You'll download this from the SolarWinds customer portal. I've already logged in and we're going to choose Database Performance Analyzer and perform the download. There are multiple potential downloads. I'm going to be installing this on Windows, so I'm going to choose the Windows installer. The download doesn't take very long. Uh, once the download has completed, we are going to run it. So, uh, you can see I've done this a few times. I'm gonna come down and click open the file. Takes just a moment. While the installer is running, come back to in a moment, download the software, install DPA, that's what's going on right now. Yes. Takes a moment to set itself up. Once it's set up, I will next my way through the install, accept the terms of the license agreement, and actually perform the installation. This is just a basic Windows install. So while that's running, what's our next step? Our next step will be taking the software and pointing it to a database repository. So let's give this uh, a moment to complete. It's pretty fast, just takes a couple of minutes. Again, I do recommend that uh, you allow other people access to the software and teach them how to use it. I do that at almost every shop we install this in. Once Windows is installed, we can run the DPA. Now, uh, easiest way to do this is if you type DPA in your search, you'll get a website, which is DPA Web Client. Alternatively, you can type into your uh, URL uh, HTTPS colon slash slash localhost colon 8124. If you don't want to go to uh, localhost, you can give it the name of the server. Uh, this one running is, uh, is running on Soaring Dodo. I could do Soaring Dodo colon 8124. And that will be the way you get to this most of the time. This is simply the result of running on a slow box. We will get there.
and we're here. So SolarWinds DPA, the first thing we're going to do is create the repository. This is the database that will collect the data and store the data that we are collecting from the servers that we want to monitor. I'm going to use a SQL server on this local box. Connection information to this, I always do this by IP. It's a habit I've always been in, uh, so I don't have to worry about URL or resolution, and uh, it just gets there very quickly. So here's the IP on the local box. Windows authentication. Uh, I'm going to be using uh, Dodo backslash Jeff Garbus. That is the uh, box of the access. I'm going to copy and paste a truly awful password that our security admin made us put in. Takes a moment to verify it. Uh, now that we have access to the box, I have to decide how DPA will access the repository. Uh, you can create a separate login for DPA to access the repository, and uh, that's probably a good practice. Uh, you can also use, uh, but it looks like this has to be Windows authentication because the other one was. Uh, I'm going to use the same login to get into the repository. as opposed to creating a new one. And again, this is all entirely for repository access. It is going to create a repository database, DPA underscore, whatever you want to call it. This is calling it jgarbus. There's no reason not to do that for now. Uh, it's looking for an email address. I'm going to plug one in. This is where alerts will go to. Note that there will be default uh, reports that come out automatically. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and click on Create Repository. Doesn't take long at all, just a few seconds. And presto, we have a repository. Now, once the repository is created, we're going to start pointing it to servers that we want to monitor. So we'll come back here. Repository has been created. Uh, what does that look like? If I bring up SSMS, I'll show you what that looks like while I click over here on Register Database Instance to Monitor. This is where we start getting into the nitty gritty. Uh, Management Studio is coming up slowly. I mentioned this was a slow box. Now, as you're choosing the instance types to monitor, note that we've got a lot of different selections here. Oracle, SQL Server, Sybase, DB2, MySQL, Postgres, MariaDB, uh, lots of this stuff out there. Note that if you're going to be running in the cloud, there are extensions that allow us to monitor some of the cloud components. So do be as precise as you can about what you want to monitor. We're going to be monitoring a SQL Server. Uh, Coming back in multitasking, I just want to show you that uh, once we connect, we'll see that here on this local box, we've created DPA J Garbus exactly the way we expected to. Now, registering the instance, we've chosen SQL Server. The host name that we're going to address for SQL Server is this one. You do want to use TCP IP. Uh, there are exceptions, but I always plug in the port number. Authentication, Windows, monitoring user. Uh, you can, uh, for this, you can. Uh, you can create a new user, again, recommended practice. Uh, for simplicity's sake, I am going to simply use my own login. I'm 
and note that I'm able to copy and paste successfully. Display name, when you look at the servers, the server list and the DPA list, there will be a display name. That is what we've chosen. This is all listed. I'm going to go ahead and do the registration. Database is successfully registered. That is all it took. It made the connection. It was good. Uh, we can register another one and go through this iteratively until we have all of our databases registered. Uh, or we can just go back to the options page if you like. Now, I'm not going to talk about this. This is uh, a topic for a much longer webinar. I am going to go to the home page just so that we can verify that we're monitoring the server. Storing Penguin, it's running. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to skip the short video, which you may want to go see. And I'm just going to come over here to current. And uh, it is picking up data, but it is an idle database. So really not much is running. On the resources side, there's a lot of things that we pick up. And uh, after you've been running this for about 10 minutes, you'll be shocked at how much information you're getting off the site. So that's pretty much it. We install it, download the software, install the DPA, register the repository, then we start pointing the DPA to the monitors. That's pretty much it. I hope this is useful. Please let us know if you liked it. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.